How is it going everybody Mr Android here welcome back to a brand new video on this channel today i'll be doing a full comparison between the One UI 6 and the iOS 17.1 my Galaxy S23 Ultra is already running the latest One UI 6 based on Android 14 and i have installed the iOS 17.1 on the 15 Pro Max well Samsung's One UI is considered to be one of the most popular Android skins so let's find out how it actually stacks up against the latest and greatest iOS 17 with that said, stay tuned and watch this video till the very end. Also, let's aim for at least 1000 likes on this one. So drop a like, leave a comment and let's get started. Alright guys, first things first, let's start off with the always on display. Now, according to Apple, this is like a pro feature that is only exclusive for the pro models. But if you own a Samsung device, no matter whether it's a flagship or a mid-range phone, you are going to get the always on display feature and it is far more superior than the 15 Pro Max. Not only you can customize and change the clock style and color, but with One UI 6, Samsung also lets you to add different widgets to your always on display and make it even more useful. Apart from this, you can also add stickers, GIFs and download some amazing themes from the Galaxy Store. There are a bunch of customization options Samsung provides with the always on display. If I talk about the iPhone, the only option that I get inside the settings is that I can enable or disable the wallpaper as well as the notifications. We do not have any other customization related to the always on display. But iOS 17 has this really cool feature called standby mode and it basically turns your iPhone screen into a little smart display when charging. You can have a glance at time, music, calendar, live activities and much more. It gets activated when your iPhone is getting charged in landscape mode. This is something missing on Samsung's One UI but then again you can add different widgets to the always on display and that actually works even better than the standby mode. Before we move further, it's time to talk about today's video sponsor. Whether you are moving from Android to iPhone or iPhone to Android, Mobile Trans is an amazing tool that can help you to move all your data to your new phone seamlessly. So now you don't have to worry about losing access to certain accounts or trying to remember those passwords and settings. Mobile Trans is like a one-stop shop for all your data transfer needs. It bridges the gap between your old and new smartphone and it lets you migrate different types of data with just a few clicks. Now the installation process is simple and all you need to do is just download and install this amazing software onto your PC or Mac by clicking the first link in the description below. It's gonna take less than a minute to install and once that is done, just click on start and here you'll see everything that this software can do for you. You can transfer your WhatsApp data and the best part is you can do that without overwriting the original data. Then we also got phone transfer, so you can migrate from one phone to the other including contacts, photos, videos, documents and more. You can also create backups on your computer and then restore onto a smartphone with the help of mobile trans. If you are someone who keeps switching phones often, then it's a must have software that you need to have on your PC. Be sure to check this one out, you will find a direct link in the description below. Moving on to the lock screen, both iOS and One UI offer similar customizations. You can customize the clock, add different fonts, change the color and even you can apply different widgets onto your lock screen. But One UI lets you configure and add your favorite app shortcuts instead of just having a quick access to the torch and the camera app. So these are the customization and lock screen features that you get on both iOS and One UI 6. Next, if you talk about home screens, here things look quite different, especially on my 15 Pro Max. Now even though I was able to customize my iPhone's home screen, the entire process took me around 20 to 30 minutes and it is not as simple as doing things on Android. What I did was, I changed the icon for each and every app individually using the shortcut app. Once you are done with the icons, now let's say you want to add a widget. There is an app called Widgie and it is totally free on the App Store. But you cannot add widgets just like that. First you need to take a screenshot of a blank home screen. Then upload that screenshot in the app and assign a slot for your widget. Then finally you can go to the widget section and apply that specific widget. Trust me you need to have a lot of patience if you really want to customize your iPhone. On the other hand if I talk about One UI 6, you know how customization works on Android. The first and very basic thing you can do is, you can change the grid size and fit more apps in the home screen. Not only that, you can completely change the icon pack, add beautiful widgets to your home screen without any limitations. And there is an official app called Goodlock which lets you to customize each and every element on your phone. You can customize the recent apps menu, change the tiles color in the quick panel, there are tons of different themes you can download from the Galaxy Store and you can even apply some really cool looking launchers directly from the Play Store. 
when it comes to customization iOS is nowhere close to Android and since we are talking about One UI which is one of the most customizable Android skin I really don't think there is even a comparison between these two if I open the quick panel on both these phones as you can see we have got this brand new revamped quick settings panel on One UI 6 and there are quite a few changes now you get the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth toggle right at the top and we have the dark mode and eye comfort shield right below the brightness bar for quicker access Apart from this, what I really like about Samsung One UI is when you want to add or remove any toggle, you just need to tap on this edit icon and from here, you can directly edit the tiles in the notification panel. When it comes to iOS, if you want to make any changes to the control center, every time you need to open the settings page, search and then go inside control center, finally you can change the layout from here and it just doesn't feel right to me. I don't know why but for some reasons, you cannot completely turn off the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections directly from the control center. So these are a couple of things that I didn't like about the iOS control center but if you are an iPhone user then I think you'll get used to it and it's definitely not a deal breaker in any way. Well there is a new feature in iOS 17 which allow users to customize their contact posters and there is a lot of customizations you can do. You can customize and change the font image and background for yourselves as well as your friends and family. This exact feature is already present on Samsung phones for years now and not only you can customize the background picture but you can also use any video as a call background which is quite amazing. Next if I open the recent page in Samsung's One UI you get some useful options like you can open any app in a split screen or a pop-up window and take your multitasking to the next level. You can also open split screen by just swiping with your two fingers like this. In iOS 17, you don't get any such feature and we still do not have a close all button. Now let's talk about the navigation gestures. In Samsung phones, you always get an option to decide whether you want the navigation gestures or buttons. You just need to go to display and then to navigation bar. Here you can select whichever is more convenient for you. iOS 17 doesn't have any such options and you have to stick with the default gestures. I think even the gestures are better in Android and you can also assign some additional gestures that can save a lot of your time. If I open the settings page on both phones, Apple has been keeping the same style and you won't see any difference in iOS 17. On the other hand, One UI 6 looks way more cleaner and there is also a separate app section that shows all the applications you have installed in one place. In iOS 17, if I keep scrolling, you'll see all the applications and we do not have a separate section for that. This makes it look more cluttered and it doesn't look good at all. Finally, if you talk about the animations, even though Samsung has improved the animations in One UI 6, I still prefer iOS 17 because the animations are way better and much more smoother when compared to any Samsung device. You can see the animations side by side and decide which UI has smoother animations. Apart from this, Samsung's One UI has more advanced features such as the Bixby routines, Dex support and we also have an app called Goodlock that takes your customization to the next level. Now overall I think Samsung's One UI offers a lot more customizations and it is filled with some amazing features that can make your smartphone using experience a lot better and fun to use. While iOS 17 can definitely provide you a more polished experience but still it lacks some useful much needed features. Now if you want me to choose one, I'll go with Samsung's One UI because I really like the customization and features that Samsung offers. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video then be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I am Mr. Android and I'll see you guys in the next one.